Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to the Growing Band Director Podcast. My name is Kyle Smith, and joining me is my friend and colleague, Jeff Smith. Our mission is to share practical advice and explore topics that will help every band director, no matter your experience level, as well as music education students who are working to join us in the coming years. Together, we will discuss many aspects of a well-rounded band program, but most importantly, we will discuss concepts that help us all improve our own programs each and every day. Always remember the famous quote by Ray Kroc, when you're green, you're growing, and when you're right, you rot. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Growing Band Director podcast, everybody. I'm really excited to be here with you today as a, a venture to play you six pieces of music that I think your students need to experience. Um, of these six pieces, three are going to be for wind band, three are going to be for jazz ensemble, all three are extremely playable and wonderful pieces of music that students need to know. I'm sure some of you will know some of these pieces. Um, there's a good chance that of uh, the six pieces here, uh, almost everybody will be learning a new piece. Uh, I choose these because the amount of music you can teach through this, the, the amount of humanity you can teach through these pieces, as well as the great musical experiences you can teach uh, are really really top-notch. So let's get started. The first piece we're going to listen to is um, by Frank DeKelly. It is called A Shaker Gift Song. This is also uh, entitled Here, Take This Lovely Flower from the Simple Gifts for Shaker Songs piece. That's a little bit harder. This movement is a slow 6-8, and it's just a wonderful piece of music you can use as a middle tune with any band that can play grade two and above, maybe one and a half and above. It's not rangy, but it's more of a musical experience than anything else. Um, this is based on the Shaker Lullaby, Here Take This Lovely Flower, found at Dorothy Berliner Commons Extraordinary Collection, Lullabies of the World, and Daniel Patterson's Monumental Collection, this based Shaker Spiritual. The song is an example of the phenomenon of the gift song, music received by the spirit from the spirits by shaker mediums while in a trance. Although the shakers practiced celibacy, there were many children in their communities, including the children of recent converts, as well as orphans from whom they took in. Like many shaker songs, these lullabies embodied the shaker's ideal of childlike simplicity. So as you listen to this piece, take this lovely flower, or if you're buying it, you can just buy the piece entitled Shaker Gift Song. It's They're identical. Uh, it starts with the, the melody in clarinet, alto sax one, and French horn in a lovely statement in B-flat major, as my friend Craig Skeffington calls the people's key. Uh, it then, it then will move briefly to E-flat major and back down to B-flat as a, a wonderful plagal cadence. The second statement is in canon between flute, oboe, and clarinets with a little bit of harmonic pad in the lows behind. Then we'll introduce a little bit of straight mute behind uh, when it goes to the four chord the second time. And then it builds to a full band uh, version of the tune, which quickly modulates into E flat major, though the key does not change. And this is one of those amazing pieces of music uh, amazing moments of this piece, I should say. Um, there's very little percussion, so this works really well if you are A, just sight reading and working on um, musicianship right away, or if you don't have a lot of percussionists, or if you're lucky enough and fortunate as I am to have a split class where you can work on this without percussion as well. Um, it ends very nicely in the key of E flat major. And one reason I like this a lot is because just playing 6-8 music is something that's so... Um, under, I think, served in our profession. And just like playing cut time music, especially if it's playable and musical and um, it's something that is really good experience for the kids. So I hope you enjoy listening to this piece. This is Shaker Gift Song, also known as Here, Take This Lovely Flower by Frank DeKelly.
All right. The next piece of music I think everybody should know is a grade three piece by Andrew Boysen Jr. This is entitled Metamorphosis. Um, one of the things that's great about this piece is the ability to do cross-curricular work. In fact, that's what it, it stemmed from as well. Here's a little bit behind it. Metamorphosis was commissioned by Eric Cobb and the Cooperative Middle School Wind Ensemble in Stratum, New Hampshire, and premiered in 2010. Since the Cooperative Middle School is only about 20 minutes away, where I, I teach at the University of New Hampshire, I was fortunate enough to be actively involved with the students throughout the process, which was a truly enjoyable experience. In fact, in fact, part of our process procedure, excuse me, involved having the students write letters to me discussing their own ideas for the commission. Mr. Cobb and I chose the best discussions, suggestions from that list, and the band voted on the final selection. Metamorphosis is intended to trace the life cycle of a butterfly, beginning with a slow, beautiful melody, which is the caterpillar melody, followed by a faster, transformable passage, the caterpillar into the chrysalis, after which a new butterfly melody emerges, suggesting that the butterfly has taken flight. And he does a really nice thing between measures 49 and 97 in this, where every time the melody comes around, it changes just a little bit. And by the time it gets to measure 97 and has taken flight, it is a completely new melody. At the end of the piece, the opening material returns as the butterfly floats off into the distance. Although the piece was intended to be about the life cycle of a butterfly, it occurred to me as I was composing that the whole idea of transformation and metamorphosis applies just as easily to our own development as humans, from our innocent childhood through adolescence and the point of which we ourselves take flight. So one of the reasons I like this piece is it's in F major. And again, finding a good F major piece at an easy grade three level is, is really nice to do. I did a companion guide for this. If anybody uh, would like it, you're welcome to reach out to me and I'll give it to you. If you don't know what a companion guide is, it's basically a short method book that uses themes from a piece written out for the entire band. So everybody can work on the techniques uh, as you put it together. A lot of people have done these throughout and we did this uh, one for metamorphosis. The one I did involves some F major basic scale work followed by, uh, let's see, one, two, three, and four of the thematic material melodies that the kids will play on. Uh, Metamorphosis is scored for five percussionists. Percussion one plays bells, tam-tam, marimba, and bongos. Percussion two plays vibraphone, bass drum, and vibra slap. Percussion three plays triangle, tambourine, shaker, and uh, bar chimes. Percussion four plays finger cymbals, suspended cymbal, three tom-toms, and sandpaper blocks. And percussion five plays sleigh bells, suspended cymbal, and bar chimes. Uh, anytime you're lucky enough to have five percussionists in your group, um, Boysen's music works really well because each stu- each child is responsible for setting up a couple different instruments. And the parts are not usually super complicated, but they really move them into playing from one instrument only on a piece to playing multiple instruments. The band has to sing a concert F. And a uh, what you really need for a soloist is a flute player. This could be done as a section as well. It's written as a solo at the beginning and end. It does go down to low C, and uh, you you need to have a, a really nice tone as they play this. So as the piece transforms, it's just a simple 3-4 F major piece, but it, it really does, uh, it, it changes tempo, and about halfway through, you'll notice it goes very fast, and the, the metronome, if you will, the tempo and the percussion is held by the marimba. You'll hear the marimba has eighth notes. And... Again, there's some really nice colors that happen throughout this with muted trumpets and lots of other things that happen as well. I think you'll find that this piece is one of those that that it works as a well as an opening piece. It works well as a middle piece. It also will work well as a closing piece. And I like it as well because it sounds harder than it is and is a really nice musical challenge for students who play harder music to work on a piece like this, but it's also a nice push piece for that piece for those bands that are just starting into the grade three level and you have uh, a pretty good flute player. So I hope you enjoy Metamorphosis by Andrew Boysen Jr.
The final wind band piece I'd like to share with you is one of the staples of the wind band literature, but I think many times people don't know this music and have never heard of Claire Grunband and has not have never played this piece before. This is called Kentucky 1800 and is meant to um, bring out three pieces of music that were used in the 1800s in the Kentucky frontier development. And this was written in 1954, but it's extremely playable. Again, this is a grade three. I would not call it a grade three and a half, but a wonderful piece of music that every student should be able to uh, attain if they're at that level or higher. It uses three different um, songs, The Promised Land, Cindy, and I'm Scared, I'm Sorry, and I'm Sad and Lonely. Um, this promotes music from our American heritage and culture, and it helps us study history to learn more about history through our study of music. There's a wide variety of styles here. Dynamics go from piano to triple to triple forte, whatever that really is. Uh, students need to have a lush lyric sound from time to time. And it uses the keys of G minor, G major for a short period of time, though it's not in the key signature, I don't believe. Key of A flat major and key of E flat major. So there's a good push if you're working on multiple key signatures in a piece. This is a really good one for you. This works really well as an opener. It also would work really well as a middle tune as well and could be used as a closer in certain instances. As we start the piece, it starts with an, an opening fanfare in the key of concert B flat, again, the people's key. The range is up to F for most instruments, concert, concert F. There's a nice baritone and tenor sax clarinet solely as they work on the promised land melody, which is a, a flowing lyric melody. And then after that, it develops and is a little bit more marcato, as well as has moments of lyricism as they finish through this melody. When it goes to I'm Sad and Lonely, this is the one that goes into A flat major. Flute and clarinet carry the melody and things are cued all the way in the brass. So if you need more players, on things, you are welcome to do that. The trumpets are asked to play straight mute as well on this movement. It's a super pretty movement. As it goes to the final movement, uh, the Cindy movement, these are all ataka, so there's no break in between. This is our third, our third movement and the dance movement. There is a short trumpet solo that is to be muted as well, but is also cued in clarinet and oboe. And then it ends in the key of E flat major, with some good 16th and 8th rhythms and the melody gets put into the low instruments, which is always a nice thing for us to have as band directors. As the piece comes to a conclusion at letter L, it moves back to the key of B flat and starts quoting the original opening of the melody as well. So it ends just the way, same way that it begins. But instead of ending in G minor, it ends in G major, again, without a key signature for only uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six measures and has a nice grand ending and it's titled Broadly. So it's it's a really amazing piece of music to teach. Let's see what the percussion is asked to do. Again, this is an older style piece, so there is not as much percussion. It is still a challenge to play it very well. But if you have a large number of kids, you need to be a little bit creative on this one. There is a timpani, crash cymbals, snare drum, and bass drum. There, is, there are no mallet parts. However, I could foresee easily writing a mallet part that would work well to supplement what you need in your band, as well as that would work what would work really well to supplement what the piece is, need, is needed by the piece as well. If this is interesting to you and you are not sure where to start, please reach out to me at growingband.com and I am, I am welcome, happy to walk you through how to potentially write a great mallet part that would not take away from the intent of this piece but would also serve your percussionists should you be looking for more for them to do. So I hope you enjoy this piece if you've not heard it before. And if you have heard it before, please stay tuned because we've got three more great jazz pieces that I want to uh, play for you that are uh, wonderful as well. So here's Kentucky 1800. <laughs>
The next piece of music is by Duke Ellington, the wonderful Duke Ellington, and it's entitled The Creole Love Call. This is by one of the greatest arrangers in the jazz band idiom, Mark Taylor. The Creole Love Call is originally a piece of music that will, in the Ellington tradition, feature students on muted instruments where they are asked to mimic the human voice. Now, many times this is done with what's called a pixie mute, which is like a straight mute that fits inside a horn, and then a plunger can go on top of that. In this arrangement, it's just using plunger. So the Creole love call, you know, if you're not sure, Cre- Creole, the Creole people were people who were half French and half African American. They were descendants from slaves as well as from slave owners. And they were a very well respected group of people who were also fabulous musicians. And they had their own orchestras and and all this. And their culture comes from France as well as the Caribbean and is still found in New Orleans today. So this street beat, this Mardi Gras flavor of second line is in this, even though it's a slow blues shuffle. It's, we'd call this a grade two and a half or three. It really features a trumpet player and a trombone player. It's not super rangy, but they are the features out front. And what I love about this piece of music is that A, it's different. B, it's a blues. And you always want to have a blues on a program. You get to teach so much about American history when you teach blues. I also love that the the brass players get to play with plungers on this. The, The rhythm section needs to stay very steady and the horn players have to learn how to play behind the beat. Most importantly, they're going to be forced to listen to the music of Duke Ellington and what this originally sounded like and then how close can they get their version to sound like that. This is one of those pieces of music you could do a wonderful job with an all-state jazz band. You could also do this with a second jazz band at a high school or a first jazz band at a middle school. It's just a wonderful piece of music that I think every student needs to hear. So I I really hope you enjoy the recording of Mark Taylor's Creole Love Call.
The next piece of music that we're going to play for the jazz idiom is entitled All Blues by Michael Sweeney. This is available not only for big band, but also for combo. And in that combo arrangement, it's actually just written part one, two, three, and four. So there is fle flexibility with this, uh, who you have on which parts. So why do I love this one? Well, again, A, again, it's a blues. It's a, an F major blues, but it's in 3-4. And this works really well if you want to do a middle tune. It works well as an opening tune as well. There's a great soli for the entire band with a shout chorus, if you will, swings super hard and it's super fun to work on. It is pretty rhythmically simple, but because it's in 3-4, it gives you a little bit of added meat to work on there. The chord progression is your standard blues chord progression, but because it's all blues, when it gets to the five chord, it does have a little bit of chromatic motion that's all written out, and, and that's a wonderful part of this tune. The solos that are written out are actually solos taken from the originals, from the Kind of Blue album from 1959 that Miles Davis did. He had John Coltrane and Cannonball Adderley, as well as many other great musicians on there. And again, this doing this chart is a reason to be listening to the original All Blues from the Kind of Blue album. This piece of music can't be more than a grade two and a half. I've never found it to be something that's difficult to put together for kids who have a little bit of experience. And again, could work very well at a high level group as well as a younger ensemble as well. Anytime you're playing the music of Miles Davis, to me, it's a win-win. And so students can improvise on this. You can also use the written solo and know that they're using the transcribed solo or at least portions of it from the original album, as, as well as you can even take the actual transcription, which you can find online and all, you could have students all learn that. You know, there's so much teaching material in here and it's basically, you can use it with, as long as you have a rhythm section and at least four players, it's written in part one, two, three, four. If you buy the combo version, um, you can also buy the big band version as well. Uh, if I were buying it for the first time, I'd probably buy the combo version because then I could just make copies as needed and divvy up the part one, two, and three, and four. And uh, it's such a great piece of music. So here's uh, Michael Sweeney's version of All Blues. <laughs>
Last one. Thanks for sticking with me here. This is our sixth and final piece of music. This is entitled Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow by Rick Stitzel. The reason uh, I put this one on here, it's pretty limited. You can only really do it in what, November and December. You know, you work on this in the middle of the year and you might have a revolt. But what I love about it, if you don't know Rick Stitzel's writing, he makes the band swing super hard at a young band level. Uh, I'm actually using this this week as well uh, with one of my groups. And it was a, a great opportunity to get the rhythm section to be on top of the beat and then to have the horn players playing behind the beat in the bassy style. Ranges are very limited. You can even do this with not full instrumentation. I believe you only need one trombone and two or three trumpets and you know two two or three saxophones and you could make this work just fine. It, it uh, plays itself almost. It sounds just like the tune. So audiences like it because they know the tune, but also it's not cheesy in any way. And kids are able to really work on their swing factor as you work on this piece. So uh, I've also decided this week to use a vocalist where the vocalist is just going to sing in front of the band. I'm not going to change the chart in any way, but just another way to to bring the audience factor up. You know, I found when you're working on a, on Christmas jazz stuff, anytime it can be really in the pocket. I want to make sure I'm teaching the kids jazz style. I want to make sure I'm teaching them the authentic stuff. I'm not going to take a piece off just because we have to learn it for something the audience is going to like. So uh, this piece is really great. And if you don't know Rick Stitzel's writing, just go in Pepper or anywhere else or YouTube and put in Rick Stitzel and you'll find lots of stuff, especially if you have younger bands. He has so much great music out there. So I hope you enjoy this version of Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, arranged by Rick Stitzel. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks for being here uh, on this episode. And I hope that these six pieces of music found you some some comfort and that you enjoyed some of them, if not all of them. I love all of them very much. And that's why I decided to put them on this episode. Uh, at any point, if you have other pieces you'd like to be featured or you'd like more people to know about or you'd like to come on the podcast with me, please feel free to reach out at growingband.com. I love hearing from people. 
And thanks so much for those of you who have been reaching out recently and giving me kind words and, and encouragement and all that. I, your words are very appreciated. Just please know that. And uh, thanks again for spreading the word of great teaching for band. Um, as Clark Terry would say, keep on keeping on. We sincerely appreciate you taking your valuable time and listening to the Growing Band Director podcast. Your students are very lucky to have a band director like you. If you have any suggestions for episode topics or think you have an area of expertise to share on a show with us, please reach out. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your band director friends to subscribe as well. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening to The Growing Band Director. See you next week.